Alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. We're continuing with this wonderful talk of how topic as to how Islam is a beautiful way of life. Allah gives us the guidance and the guidelines and how to live our everyday lives. You know, the mannerisms involved in living our lives, the mannerisms of eating, drinking, even entering our homes. You know, the mannerisms that we should display, you know, when making a wudu, when praying and all of that. And today we're going to speak about, you know, the beauty of and the ease and even how we greet other Muslims, how we greet other Muslims. You know, a lot of people don't even know how we should greet another Muslim. You know, you hear stuff like Gawa Goa or, or Bardane, inshallah, or uh, uh, Kuda Hafiz and all this. Are those proper greetings for other Muslims or are those greetings for non-Muslims? Well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us in many authentic hadith. The best Islam is to feed others and to greet those whom you know and those whom you do not know. This hadith here answers another question that many Muslims have asked. Can I greet or give salams to another Muslim who I don't even know? Or can I greet the non-Muslim? Say I'm walking down the street and a non-Muslim says, As-salamu alaykum to me. Or a non-Muslim says, hello to me. Or good morning to me. Uh, and I don't know him. Do I have to ignore him? Well, the prophet said, this is the best way of showing your submittance to Allah. is by greeting people who you know and even greeting those whom you don't know. We have to understand, you know, if you are walking down the street and a stranger is approaching you, if that stranger says, hello, good morning, you feel comfortable. Oh, my God, what a big relief. He was not going to harm me. He just wanted to wish me good morning. See the good in that? So you say good morning back to him. See the good in that? Or perhaps you've had a hard day. You just got off from work. You went through uh, so much trauma on your job with your clients or with your uh, boss or whatever. So you get off from work. You're walking to your car. A stranger passed by you and say, top of the day. Have a good day. Oh, my God. What a good thing. He just made me feel better. Top of the day. Good day to you, too. See the beauty in Islam? The good of Islam? Also, in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Verily, when Allah created Adam, He said to him, Go to those individuals from amongst the angels and give greetings of peace to them and listen to how they answer you because their greeting will be that of your descendants. So Adam obeyed the law. He went to those group of angels that were standing in the distance. And he said to them, As-salamu alaykum, which means may the peace of Allah be upon you. And those angels replied by saying, Wa alaykum as-salamu wa rahmatullah, which means may the peace of Allah and his mercy be upon you. And they added, and his mercy, subhanAllah. Allah. So that's how our greeting originated, guys. Our greeting of As-Salamu Alaikum and Wa Alaikum Salam. This is the greeting that the angels give to one another in paradise. 
And this is also the greeting they will give to us when we enter paradise. And this is the greeting that we should give to one another, guys. That is our greeting. Our greeting is not Goa. Our greeting is not Kuda Hafiz. Our greeting is not good morning. Our greeting is not top of the day to ya. Instead, our greeting to one another is assalamu alaikum. And the response is wa alaikum salam. And if you want to add goa to the, to the person, you can afterwards. Or if you want to say and have a good day afterwards, you can. For example, when I went to get my coffee today, I saw a Muslim sister. We were passing each other. I said, assalamu alaikum. She said, wa alaikum salam. And I said, have a good day. She said, thank you, you too. We can do it after the greeting. If I was in Kuwait and I was greeting Um Abdul, assalamu alaikum habibi. Wa alaikum salam habibiti. Goa. Okay, goa afterwards. Okay, which means the power be with you. Okay, and our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he strongly encouraged his companions to spread the greeting. He told them that if they did so, it would cause them to love one another and, it, and that they would not enter paradise until they had complete faith. And that they would not have complete faith until they love one another. So again, maybe this why we this is why we Muslims are so cursed today. We don't spread the greeting to each other. When we see another Muslim, instead of us saying "Assalamu alaikum" and "Wa alaikum salam," we run the other way, or we've replaced our greeting with "Hi" and "Bye" or "Hello," "Goodbye." This is why there is no love amongst us. And again, you will never enter paradise until you learn to love one another for the sake of Allah. We talked about that in so many classes. Basic Tawheed, loving for the sake of Allah. I love you simply because you believe in Allah, just like I do. You worship Allah just as I do. You dress just as I do. We share the same things in common. So because of that, I'm, over, I'm willing to overlook whatever faults you may have and love you for the sake of Allah. Until we can do that with one another, we'll never be a true believer. And in order to enter paradise, you have to be one who believes in Allah. Also in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said faith consists of three things. Number one, to be just to yourself. I tell you guys all the time, you have to learn to love yourself. If you don't love yourself, then how can you save yourself from the hellfire? Allah commands each and every one of us to save your soul from the hellfire. If I don't love me, then how can I help me? How can I save me? I have to be just to myself. How can I keep myself from falling into sin if I don't have any love for myself? We love Allah first, and then we love this messenger, and then you love yourself your love for you has to come before the love you have for your husband, the love you have for your children, and the love for your parents. That, that comes after loving you. Allah comes first, the prophet second, and then yourself. A lot of Muslims today don't love themselves. A lot of Muslims today hate themselves. They suffer with self-esteem issues. And this is why their faith is weak. This is why shaitan can easily dupe them away from the truth. So, in order to be a true believer, in order to have faith, you have to be just to yourself. And also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that faith consists also of giving the greetings of peace to the rest of the world. And this is important. Because we're living in the days of fitna, the trying times that our prophet warned us of, the days of, the, of terrorism, the days when the war will form against Islam and develop against Islam. 
So it's very important that we give greetings of peace to the world. And also, faith consists of giving in charity when one is in uh, uh, straightened circumstances, when you're able to. Remember, we talked about that charity begins at home. That's why your zakat, your zakat, Sister Halima, is supposed to go to the Muslims in your community, not the Muslims overseas. We have to be able to be willing to help one another, help those who are not able <coughs> to help themselves if we are in a condition to do so. So faith consists of those three things, being just to yourself, giving greetings of peace to the rest of the world, and being, in a and being, a being ready to help others if you are in a position to do so. Okay? And when we talk about the greeting, the goodness in conveying the greeting is that by conveying the greeting of assalamu alaikum, we are conveying greetings of peace to one another. And by conveying greetings of peace to one another, this is what leads to humility before Allah. And again, guys, you know, in order to be a true believer, there are certain characteristics you must have. And we talked about many of those characteristics. And one of them is humility. You must be able to humble yourself with others. We talked in the Hadith class yesterday. We explained the Hadith where the prophet said, anyone who wears his garments dragging the ground, will be in the hellfire forever because to wear your garments dragging the ground out of arrogance, thinking that you're better than others, arrogance is disbelief. We have to humble ourselves with one another. Don't go around looking down on other Muslims thinking that you're better than they. You are better than the Kafir. The simple fact that we believe la ilaha illallah makes us better than the Kafir. But in regards to each other, we should not go around looking down on one another. We have to humble ourselves and be more compassionate. Have more compassion for each other. Stop allowing jealousy to interfere. Like we talked about what happened to the sisters who used to come here 10 years ago from MySpace, the ones who left. Many of them stayed. But for those ones who left, many of them have apostated from the dean. And I blame those imams that they went running to because those imams, instead of those imams encouraging them to stay and listen to me, they allowed their jealousy of me to cause them to tell those women to, to, to leave me and my teachings. And those women left me and my teachings and look at what happened to them. We have to stop being ruled by jealousy and learn to be more compassionate towards one another. Put that jealousy aside and look to see the good in each other, to love for the sake of Allah and support each other when we need to be supporting each other. And also, guys, our prophet, he used to greet others. We're supposed to follow his example. Once the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, passed by a group of young boys, these were young boys, teenagers. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Assalamu Alaikum to them. And they returned the greeting. SubhanAllah. We got some Muslims today who think that we don't have to uh, greet people that's younger than us. We don't have to greet children. Also in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by a group of women. And he waved his hand. In greetings of, of peace, he waved his hands and said, Assalamu alaikum to them. Believe it or not, we got Muslims today who tell you that you shouldn't give salams to a woman, that you don't even have to greet a woman. The Prophet did. We have the hadith where Abu Dawood reports on the authority of Asma, the daughter of Yazid. She said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by us when we were sitting in a group of other women and he greeted us 
with the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum. So those men on Facebook that many of you think are scholars, that's going around telling you that you shouldn't greet women. You don't have to greet women. Again, this further proves they are not scholars of anything except dissension. Because our prophet used to greet the women when he passed by them. And not only him, his companions followed his example. Abu Bakr greeted them, so did Umar, Uthman, Ali, and everyone else. Subhanallah. The goodness in learning Islam, true Islam, based on the example of our prophet. Not Islam as taught to us by men off the internet who have no proof to support what they say other than their own opinions and fatwas. Okay? Also, we have another hadith. The, the, uh, the companions were leaving from the Friday prayer, and they passed by an old woman, and they greeted her with the greetings of assalamu alaikum. And guess what? She invited them into her house, and she would give them a bowl of soup. Every Friday, this woman would cook vegetable soup. And she would serve it to the men who when they left the mosque when they passed by her house. And I remember another hadith. After the prophet died, one day, Abu Bakr and a couple of the companions were, were reminiscing. And they said, remember that old woman. That old woman who used to cook soup. I was so eager to leave the, the Juma prayer because I looked forward to that soup that she would present us after, after uh, Juma. Subhana Allah. You got some Muslim men out there teaching you guys that you can't even accept uh, food from a woman who's not a mahram to you. That you can't even enter into a woman's house who's not a mahram with, with you if you got a group of men with you. You can if there's other men with you. You just can't be alone with a woman who's not a mahram to you. Okay? Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another authentic hadith, The young person should give greetings of peace to the older person. And the passerby should give greetings of peace to the one who is sitting. And the rider to the one who is walking. And those who are in a small group to those who are in a larger one. Subhana Allah. Look at the wisdom behind this. How many of you were told that we don't have to give greetings to an older person? Well, there it is. That's a lie that you were taught. Why should the person who is walking be the first to greet the one who is sitting? Well, because say, for example, you're sitting at a bus stop. You're sitting on the bench. You're waiting for the bus to come pick you up. A person is walking towards you. You're alone. You don't know if that person's getting ready to accost you verbally or physically. And that person knows that he has the advantage over you because he's standing. You're sitting. So as the person gets nearer, they look at you and say, hello, how are you? And keep walking. Oh, my God, my heart was in my throat. I thought I was going to be attacked. See the hikmah. See the wisdom of Islam. The person that is standing has the advantage over the one that is sitting. That's why the person standing should be the one to greet first. To let the person know I'm not here to harm you. The same if you are in a group of few. And you're walking past a people who's, uh, who's greater number than yours. You're letting them know by speaking to them first, I'm not here to cause any problems. Hello, assalamu alaikum. I'm not here to cause any problems. The hikmah, the wisdom of Islam. And also, what if it's you, you're walking down the street, or you're standing in the store, 
it's you and there's another Muslim in, uh, in front of you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said whichever of them greets the person first receives the greater reward. So my example, when I came out of Kroger today, there was a Muslim sister going in. I was coming out. I beat her to it. Assalamu alaikum. And she smiled and said, Wa alaikum salam. Have a good day and you too. I beat her to it. I got the blessing, the bigger blessing. She got blessings too, but I got the bigger one. So whichever one is first to greet receives the greater reward. Because again, you're, 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 you're initiating something good. You're initiating something that is strongly, strongly encouraged by Allah and our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, guys, in another hadith, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, when any of you sits, he should give greetings of peace. And when he stands up, he should do so. And the first greeting is not a greater obligation over the second. Okay? And this is in regards to visiting people and leaving them. Say, for example, I come, you know, I'm coming to the mosque and uh, 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 I'm walking in on a group of you. Who should be the first one to greet? Me. I'm the one getting ready to sit down. So, I'm, so I come to the mosque and a group of sisters are sitting there on the floor, I'm going to say assalamu alaikum and then sit down with them. And when you get ready to leave, the same thing. Well, it's time for me to go. Assalamu alaikum, my sisters. And they say wa alaikum salam. The wisdom there. I'm the one entering. I'm the one joining the group. So I should be the first to initiate the greeting. I'm the one entering. Just like when you enter your home. When you come home, the first thing you say is Bismillah upon entering. And then you want to greet your family. You don't wait for them to come downstairs to find you. You find them and say, Assalamu alaikum, I'm home. Same thing here. Okay. Also in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If any of you meets his companion, he should greet him with greetings of peace. And if a tree or a wall is between you, then meet him with uh, meet up with him and then greet him with greetings. In other words, say, for example, you know, I'm standing behind a wall and you're standing behind a wall. I'm going to walk around the wall. Then I'm going to say, Assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum salam. OK. Once we walk around and meet, give the greeting. So again, we see the beauty of Islam, guys. Islam, it's not just a religion. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful way of life. Allah gives us the guidance. He outlines to us how to interact with each other, how to relate to each other, what the type of mannerisms we should have with each other, even when it comes to greeting one another. And also, guys, every Muslim should know, it's from the Sunnah of the Prophet that whenever you enter the mosque, you want to greet the people there. The person who entered the mosque should, first of all, make a two rock cot prayer to bless the mosque before you sit down. Okay? Before you sit down. The first thing you do when you go to the mosque, Sister Tasha, you're a new Muslim, Sister Aliyah. When you go to the mosque, the first thing that you should do when you enter is offer a two rakat prayer to bless the mosque. And you have to make it before you sit down. And then after you are done with that two rakats, then you look around and give salams to all the sisters who are around. Remember, Allah comes first. So enter the mosque, do your two rakats, and then when you're done, look at the sisters and assalamu alaikum and shake their hand, the sister's hand. Okay? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us, guys, that whenever we shake hands with one another, when we give the greeting, Allah will erase your minor sins. But remember, you can only shake hands with the, the same sex. 
You cannot shake hands with a man who is not a mahram to you. And a man cannot shake hands with a woman who is not a mahram. So if you go to the mosque and you're a sister, you do your two rakats, then you look at the other sisters, shake their hand and give them salams, and Allah is erasing your, your minor sins. And again, when the prophet entered the home, he would greet his family. He would say, As-salamu alaykum. He would say it in a way just to let them know he's home. And also the prophet said, give greetings of peace before speaking. That's why a lot of Muslims, when they come to the website, if they have a question, they'll say, As-salamu alaykum, Sister Layla, and then they'll ask their question. Because the prophet said we should give this, the greeting of peace before speaking. Okay. Finally. Finally. Ibn Umar has stated in authentic hadiths. Greetings of peace should be given before asking a question. So there it is. So whoever asks a question before giving the greetings of peace. Do not answer him. So again, if you're at the website, say for example, you got a question for me, you should start off with assalamu alaikum. Uh, Sister Layla, I have a question. Okay? And also, when we answer, wa alaikum salam is the way we answer the greeting. But we can also add wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The prophet would add that to the answer because uh, this means, and may Allah's mercy and blessings be upon you. So, assalamu alaikum. If you want, you can add, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Or you can say, just plain, assalamu alaikum. You get more blessings if you add, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to it. Okay? The same with answering. Wa alaikum salam is sufficient. But you get even more blessings if you say wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay? So again, guys, uh, uh, these are the sunans that our Prophet taught us as to how to greet one another and how to greet others. Okay, Islam is a beautiful way of life. We're not terrorists. We're not barbarians. We are not uncouth people. We're supposed to be people of justice. We're supposed to be people of righteous righteousness. We're supposed to be people of good adab, good behavior. But unfortunately, the problem is that most Muslims do not understand their religion because they were not taught properly. They were not taught by the correct people. Okay, most Muslims don't know anything about the Prophet Muhammad. They don't know anything about how he lived his life. They don't know what he did, what he said. They don't know how he interacted with others. We have to learn about him, learn his sunnah. And the only way you're going to learn is from the people of knowledge. You cannot read books on your own because you're not going to understand these hadiths on your own because you don't know the history behind them. You have to learn from the people of knowledge. And I strongly encourage all of you to cling to this website. This website has been around since 1995 for a reason. Allah has kept this website here for a reason. Because what's coming from here is the truth. It's based on Quran and authentic hadith. That's a fact. The Dawah method that I've been using is on point. I am very, very, very uh, patient with you as a student. And I am very humble and kind in my dealings with you. But if you come in here a hypocrite, you come in here trying to oppose the truth, I will become a ferocious lion against you. Because Allah commands us all to be firm, to be severe. To be harsh with a hypocrite, I have no tolerance for a hypocrite. And if you come in here, a hypocrite, I will become a lion on you. But for the rest of my students who are here seeking the truth, you know, you won't find a more patient person than me. Okay? 
And I want to also remind you women, you women get more blessings learning from your home than from a mosque. But the problem today is that now everybody is teaching from their homes now. You have to learn how to filter out the frauds from the people of truth. There's a lot of people out there who are fraud. They're not really teaching you anything. You need to learn what beneficial knowledge is. Beneficial knowledge is knowledge that it not only is based on the Quran and Sunnah, but it's knowledge that penetrates your heart, that will cause you to think, that will cause you to want to repent, that will cause you to want to change and become a better person. That's beneficial knowledge. If it doesn't impact you that way, then it's not a benefit. Something to think about. Okay, we'll stop. Sooner, Sooner, Sooner. 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 Sooner.